now present George Edwards in Frankenstein. Baron Frankenstein was gradually recovering his health under the care of the captain and the surgeon of the ship Voyager, which was icebound in northern waters. Each day, Baron Frankenstein told Captain Walton some of his story, and the captain duly noted these facts in his journal. Perhaps you would care to have another look through my journal, Baron Frankenstein. You may desire to make some further corrections. If you will leave your journal here, I will go through it, Captain Walton. On looking through the porthole, I notice that the weather is improving. Yes, it is noticeably warmer, too. I think the thaw will set in at any day. Then at last we can proceed on our journey to England. I trust you will be accompanying us, Baron. I doubt it. Strange that neither you nor your crew have seen any sign of the monster. Let us trust that the monster no longer lives. I must make sure before I return. I think that very soon I will be able to go up on deck. I am feeling so much better. The surgeon says that within a few days you may be able to go up on deck. Now, would you care to tell me some more of your story? Or well, let me see your journal. Ah... Uh, I was telling you how I returned home to my wife. I was afraid to tell her of the death of Ernst Claval, and I was terrified that the monster would keep his promise and appear on the day that I was reunited with Elizabeth. While we were talking, we suddenly heard a ghastly laugh, and I knew that the monster had kept his promise. Elizabeth clung to me in terror, and I said... Now, Elizabeth, you understand why I must guard you carefully. The monster has returned, and he has designs on your life. But I thought that he had promised never to take another human life. He did not keep his promise, nor did I keep mine. Oh, he is outside that door, Victor. What can we do? Well, I will lock the door. We are safe in here. I am terrified. I have kept my promise, Frankenstein. You broke yours to me. It seems that my creator can make a promise and break it. But I do not break promises. Have you sincerely mourned the death of your friend, Ernst Clavel? Ernst Clavel? Is he dead? I will explain later, Elizabeth. I am going now, Frankenstein. But I will not be very far away. Uh, not very well. Victor, what can we do? I will arrange for a bodyguard to come to the house. We will make plans to slay that foul monster. Tell me about Ernst Laval. Well, uh, I was trying to keep the news from you. Ernst has been killed, murdered by the monster. Oh, Elizabeth, are we to spend the rest of our days in fear and terror? Am I never to cease to suffer because of the crime which I committed? I will carry this pistol, Victor, and we will take every precaution to try and protect ourselves. Oh, the monster will not kill me. He desires me to live on and suffer. Oh, but I am afraid for you. Tomorrow, you shall leave here. You will go to England. Think or not that the monster would follow me, or I am safer with you, Victor. We must not depart it again. Oh, it is my fault that we are suffering all this misery. We have each other. We must do all in our power to rid the world of this foul creature. I will send a message to the Burgomaster at once. I will ask him to send his best man here to act as a bodyguard, and together we shall plan to bring about the downfall of the monster. You must send one of the servants with a message at once. Oh, Elizabeth, until that monster dies, we are to spend our days in terror and abject misery. Let us pray that we shall escape with our lives. Well, Baron Frankenstein, did the Burgomaster send someone to protect you from the monster? A man called Fabian was sent to the house. He took up his quarters there, and he acted as our bodyguard. But... I assure you, Captain Walton, that my wife and I experience misery, terror, and suspense such as is known to few mortal beings. 
Every footstep, every sound caused us to start. We were prisoners in our own home. Still, there was no sign of the monster. There came a day when I sent for the man, Fabian. I discussed with him the best plans for finding the vile creature which was endangering our existence. When Fabian came into the room, I said... Oh, uh, be seated, Fabian. Thank you. Tell me, uh, where is the baroness? She has gone to her room to rest. I saw that her door was locked, Baron Frankenstein. Do you think we need an extra bodyguard in the house? Well, it might be advisable to have another man here. Fortunately, we are all armed. The baroness never goes anywhere without her pistols. And you and I carry two pistols. Do you think the monster is somewhere in the ground? I have had the ground searched each day, and still there is no sign of the monster. I do not know where he can be. Let us send a message to the burgomaster and ask him to send another man here. We will do that at once. I feel that we will receive a visit from the monster at any time. And if there is an extra man here, we will have more chance of overpowering and killing the creature. I will give the message to the servant now. Why? This is strange. What ails you, Baron Frankenstein? Why, the door will not open. Let me see. Why? It is locked from the outside. Was the key on the outside of the door? It must have been, but I did not place it there. Well, who could have locked us in? Surely the monster is not here. We will have to break our way out of here. My wife, she is upstairs in her room. We must get out of here at once. <coughs> that is Elizabeth. Help me to break this door open. It is a heavy door. Out in the way. I will try to be prepared to try. thereby her side. She must have fired it to try to save herself, and we were too late. We were locked down in the library. I must go for help at once. Oh, we are helpless. No one can prevail against the brute which I created. He swore to kill my wife, and now he has kept his promise. Oh, and listen, You are distressed in the telling of this story, Baron Frankenstein. Shall I leave you alone? I shudder now as I recall the horror of that moment, as the realization came to me that my beloved wife had been murdered, I felt as if I had murdered her myself. But I shall live to avenge her. The monster must die. What is that? Footsteps, and I know so well. The monster is here on the ship. Are you armed, Captain? I am not. We meet again, Frankenstein. And I can lock this door behind me. Why have you come here? I hope that you were dead, you vile, murdering creature. I have no sympathy for you, only hatred and loathing. Stand where you are, Captain. I hold you firmly. You tremble. Let me go. If you call for help, you shall die. Why should you kill me? I have done you no harm. You have said that your sympathies are all with Frankenstein. But do you not realize that I also have suffered? A uh, quarrel is almost over, Frankenstein. I have come to tell you that I will slay no more of your friends unless they seek to slay me. I have but one life to claim now. Whose life is that? Yours, Frankenstein. The creature shall kill the creator. 
the monster shall destroy the man who created him. Mark that well, Frankenstein. Before this ship leaves, you shall die. I only pray that before this ship leaves, I am given the strength to kill you. I will be content to die when you are dead. Think not to escape me, Frankenstein. Your life and mine are bound together. I go now, but be prepared. The end may not be far distant. Go after him, Captain. Oh, quick. Bid your men shoot him down, though. I cannot go after him, Baron Frankenstein. I do not think that anyone can kill that monster. And he has sworn to kill all who strive to slay him. Oh, you must despise me and think me a coward. I do not think that. I understand. But go on deck, Captain. Tell your men to keep a close guard. And whatever you do, see that the officers are armed. And carry a firearm yourself. Then return to me and I will continue my story. Oh.